I just want to look uh, briefly at one area where I think social media can be really powerful. It's, it's what I think... Uh, are we all, all BBC or mostly BBC? Not all BBC. Ap apologies to those of you who aren't BBC. Uh, but I think it's, it's, it's one area that I think is, is kind of new to us within the BBC. But I think as, as journalists, it can be really powerful. Um, so I asked myself a question, what would Don Drape do? Um, I don't know whether you watch Mad Men. Apologies if you don't. Um, the, the, the idea of advertising what we do, of marketing what we do, is something that within the BBC doesn't necessarily come particularly easy to us. You know, it it's kind of feels like a bit of a dirty word. But if we're doing work that we're proud of, surely we want it to be seen by as many people as possible or heard by as many people as possible. And I don't think there's, there's anything wrong with that. And, and I think social media gives us a way that we can do that um, cheaply and effectively and, and as we build communities and we build an audience the word spreads further and hopefully you know you drive more people to whether it be your website or your radio station tv program whatever um, so last week i went to croatia with alan little one of our special correspondents now i think alan's one of the best correspondents that we've got he's absolutely fantastic and i knew as soon as i got there that the material that we were going to produce, uh, we were doing uh, a piece for the 10 o'clock news for uh, the PM programme on Radio 4 and for online. I knew as soon as we got there, it was going to be a strong story. Um, so I started thinking, I knew it was going to be broadcast last Thursday, I started thinking, how can we build a little bit of momentum on it? How can I alert people to the fact that we're working on this story and I think it's going to be quite good? So I thought, well, why don't we produce a little trail for it? and push it out through YouTube. Uh, I didn't know whether it was going to work or not. Again, I came across this, shall I tell the bosses? No, I'll just do it anyway. So, uh, so, I, came up, so I came up with this. And on the line now from the Croatian town of Nasice is our correspondent, Alan Little. Alan, good morning to you. Good morning. Is there any news of progress uh, for this Red Cross evacuation of the wounded from uh, Vukovar? Not, not really this morning. We know that the convoy sat outside uh, uh, just behind the lines in Vinkovci for five hours yesterday. We have, so we have to wait to, to hear what news from inside Vukovar. This is Vukovar in Croatia. I was here 20 years ago during one of the bloodiest battles in the wars of former Yugoslavia. This week, Croatia is going to get the go-ahead for full membership of the European Union. I'm back here to see how the country's turned the page on its recent history and made the journey to the European mainstream. So that was something that I put out on YouTube two days before uh, the story was broadcast. Thankfully, they didn't move the date of broadcast, otherwise it would have looked a bit, <laughs> <laughs> looked a bit stupid. Uh, so I took a bit of a risk there. So I put that up on YouTube. I edited that on Alan shot a specific piece of camera there. We were shooting a piece of camera anyway, so we just did another 20-second thing on the back of that. I edited that in the back of the car on the way back from Vukovar when I got uh, back to Zagreb, posted it up on YouTube, and then I sent tweets to about 20 or 30 people who I thought, including Claire, <laughs> who I thought were influential and could spread the word and uh, try to, to build up some pre-publicity. Um, and that's, again, getting back to this grey area. The BBC did put a line out about it on the official BBC uh, Twitter feed, although, again, they didn't retweet it, but they just said, have a look at this or something like that. Um, and then... On Thursday, the day that the pieces were broadcast, I continued my viral marketing campaign, call it what you will. Um, this is uh, the guy who was the, the, the centerpiece of our story, uh, who's a Croatian journalist who was killed during the war in, uh, in 1991. So I put up this on, um, via TwitPic uh, with a tweet saying, in 1991, Croatian journalist Sinisha Glavisevic uh, was killed in Vukovar. His story on tonight's 10 o'clock BBC News and PM. Um, and then again, that was retweeted and, and, and spread a bit of pre-publicity. It didn't cost anything. It was relatively quick to do. That picture I was editing for the online article anyway, so that was you know, no extra work really. Uh, and hopefully, uh, the idea is uh, you know, maybe a few people who wouldn't have listened to PM or wouldn't have watched the 10 o'clock news maybe did so as a result of seeing that. So you know, what I would say is don't hide your light under a basket. If you've got a good story, 
as I say, there's nothing wrong with advertising it. I don't think there's anything wrong with advertising it. And, and as more people come to your, engage with you through social media, hopefully they'll take more notice of this kind of thing and, and spread the word more widely. Mm. of stuff that people just block out or ignore you know but having that guy's picture and you haven't personalised it yeah and I mean I you know I could I I could see that that was, you know, I could see that uh, what that was quite a sort of compelling image. This, this guy was killed in 1991. You know, that was what drew me to this story. So I thought, well, maybe that's going to, you know, draw somebody else to the story. Um, and I, you know, I think I'm sure one thing you talk about a lot this week is you can't dip in and out of social media. It's something you've got to sort of be part of. I think if I just appeared out of nowhere and said, watch the 10 o'clock news tonight, there's a really good piece on it. People go, who's he? Yeah. Um, I think that's where a bit of investment in time pays off that, you know, if you've got... I, I, images there, so that's what you mean, you just have no thoughts about. You, I always think of the Christmas thing on flat media. Mm. Um, there was a tweet from my station there saying, um, pig's head was put up outside of a uh, post site for a, mo uh, a, a mosque. Shot horror. Well, actually, to have that picture would be really powerful. Mm. It's a powerful story. But it's sort of not, doesn't really have that same impact, but it'll be on the tip, they'll have the pictures to put up a picture and to let add to it. Would go like that, wouldn't it? That's what a newspaper would do. Yeah. You know, a newspaper would whack that on the front page, you know. Well, it's looking good at our place to push it out there, but they haven't been compelling enough. Hmm. Yeah. They haven't sold the story strong enough because we have radio. <laughs> not used to being pictures. Sure, sure. And I mean, you know, I'm, my background's in radio, so I agree with you yeah. completely, but, you know. The image, the image still grabbed me, you know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I work across radio and TV now, but yeah, a good image is a good image. You don't, you know, whether you work, whatever medium you work in. Um, the biggest retweet so far in our Twitter page is when we had a guy in who was running the London Marathon, him and his friend with a pair of testicles. So they were wearing testicle things, and then we, we were tweeting about it, and someone was just like, give us a pic. So, so you do, pic, exactly. Which went boom, 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 but we, we weren't allowed to and what I did on the I mean to come back to a radio example something I did on the same day I haven't I haven't um, included it here but on the same day as part of the sort of pre-publicity um, Alan Little had done a great radio dispatch from the from the day that Vukovar fell from 1991 which I'd, I'd mixed into the radio package but I'd only used about five seconds of it just up and down but it was a sort of, it was a piece from the Radio 4 Bulletin. It was about two minutes long. It was just a great bit of reportage. Mm. So I put that up on Audioboo and tweeted that, you know. Again, I had the material there on the laptop anyway, so it wasn't a lot of work mm. to turn around. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a great interview, the day you're going to broadcast it, take a 20 second clip, whack it up there, sell it, you know. Um, as I say, I don't think it necessarily needs, needs to be a dirty word. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just making the best of the material you've got.